interesting things came out of that I want you to address. Um, the judge is considering conspiracy charges. Uh, there's a couple of things about that I want to address. Number one, um, does that make it easier to get a conviction? And number two, do you think he should add the conspiracy charges in this instance? Um, easier to get a conviction is up in the air because a conspiracy, you have to show a common furtherance and agreement together. And I think that you could show that here, um, you know, get, given that, that effect. Now, ultimately, um, is, is it going to make it to, uh, easier to get a conviction there? That's going to be hard. And the reason is there's a good defense against it, which is maybe they were acting under urgency. So it could really go both ways. Oh, that's interesting. I want to I want to explore that a little bit more. So the idea is there has to be an agreement. And as we heard um, uh, from Julia Janae, it can be implied because it would probably have to be implied in this case. There wasn't a conversation between them, but it was clear that they were working together. So you have that. But you're also saying that with the urgency aspect of it, that could vitiate um, this conspiracy charge. Absolutely, and if I was the defense attorney, that's what I would allege there, uh, which is that they, they were maybe acting under urgency, things of the sort. What the prosecution is going to try to do is they're going to try to sh show maybe a common plan, that these guys were acting in furtherance of, of, of one common unity and agreement, and they were acting in furtherance thereof, all three of them. All right, so that, that conspiracy, I just want to be clear, it's not an actual charge. That would just be uh, part of the charge to the jury um, to let them know that that's part of this case. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was citizens' arrest. And you heard there um, the attorney for Greg McMichael talking about um, that they want, they want the judge to tell this jury um, that there was no need to tell the person uh, upon whom they're effectuating a citizen's arrest that they are actually under arrest. I think that's another important decision by this judge. Want to get your thoughts? Yeah, um, I would look at legislative intent, really. Now, uh, one one issue with this law is that it's debunked. We know this, um, right? They they um, ultimately, uh, um, you know, have, have maybe ratified this law, but um, really, um, you know, a adding that extra imposition could really change things for the jury. The jury could try and maybe run away with it, think that. Uh, Maybe the judge is trying to steer them in one direction or, or egg them on to one thing. So um, really, legislative intent and um, uh, use of discretion from this judge. You is, know, it's interesting, uh, Matthew, we know that this, when we talk about legislative intent, this is an old archaic law that they're trying to pull out here back from the eight to late 1800s or so. So legislative intent might be hard to come by. And, and my thought is, you know, if he does decide to tell this jury that I think they're in trouble because it feels like yeah. this is something they pulled out uh, after right. the fact. I don't think that necessarily was in their mind from the beginning. Right. Um, absolutely. And, you know, this is something that our judicial body, um, you know, is, is going to have to continue to almost struggle with. How do you apply this ancient law to modern day, you know, procedures and how do you educate these jurors about it? You know, it's difficult enough for the judge to do it. So could you imagine um, the task at hand? But ultimately, that's really what this judge needs to come down and look at. What is the legislative intent when they made this law? How does it apply here? And um, is, is, it, is it prejudicial one way or another? to be able to instruct this jury in this fashion. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's an important decision, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. And